Welcome back to the shop. It's still 2020, both literally and in spirit. The days are getting shorter now, the temperatures are getting colder. And this is what it looks like outside. So as you can see, in Washington State, it's definitely building season, which brings me to my next build series. What I have here is a few kits from Scott Binder Rocketry. I've got uh, the Omega, I've got two of his Lil kits, I have the Diablo, and I've got the 3-inch Thor as well. What I'm going to be building in this video series is the Omega. Let's open the box and have a look at it. Before I unbox the Omega, just a few words about it as well as Scott Binder Rocketry. I've met Scott at some of the local launches and in talking with him I found out that he used to work for Great Plains Manufacturing who uh, builds or at least used to build RC airplane kits. Some of Great Plains uh, instructions were really fantastic and I found out that Scott did most of the instructions. Scott's philosophy is to take that completeness of instruction and bring it to his own rocket kits. As you'll note in my uh, Wildman build there was no instructions at all. My lock build did have some instructions. But it's good to hear from a manufacturer that wants to help the builder succeed as much as they possibly can through the use of good instructions. So that uh, has me excited to build this uh, kit as it seems pretty complex. There's lots to do in it. So I'm looking forward to seeing the instructions for it. Now just like with all my other builds, I paid retail price for this kit. I haven't gotten any of my builds for free. So this should be as honest of a review as I can do. Now I'm a big fan of scale rockets. And I've always wanted to add a scale launch vehicle to my lineup of high power rockets. So that's what attracted me to getting the Omega kit. Of course after I get the kit I find out from Northrop that they've cancelled the uh, Omega program. So unfortunately this isn't a real scale kit anymore. It's more of a fantasy scale now. Or maybe a prototype scale. We'll, we'll call it that. We'll have fun with it anyway. A few words on the kit. It's uh, 4 inches in diameter for the main body tube and the upper section is 5.5 inches in diameter. 66 inches tall and it's got uh, clear Lexan fins for stability on the way up. The boosters as they come with the kit are non-functional and they uh, stay on the body tube. So there's plenty of room inside the upper section for a large parachute or to use multiple parachutes. And the kit also comes with uh, Scott's um, pre-made uh, altimeter sled slash camera mount. So I'm really excited to see that. Maybe I can strap my GoPro into this for my first uh, onboard video rocket kit. So let's pop the box open and see what's inside. All right, all the contents survive their journey in this box just fine. There's plenty of uh, paper protection here, a lot of packaging. Here is one of the main 4 inch tubes. This looks like the upper section. Here's a uh, 3D printed nose cone. Here's some uh, 3D printed nozzles. Nose cones for the boosters. Not sure what this uh, shorter section is for. It's got a uh, slot pre cut into it. There's another lower section. And we have some more parts inside. There's one of the uh, smaller tubes. This could be the, the motor mount tube that seems about 54 millimeters. Looks like the kit comes with a recovery harness. Here's the pre made uh, Cam 1 camera mount and altimeter sled. There's some more laser cut plywood parts. Here are the clear Lexan fins. They've got, uh, looks like a paper protectant on them. And finally, the instruction manual. All right, so I'm gonna clean up the table here. We'll have a better look at all the parts. Here's a better look of all the parts as they come out of the box. As you can see, there's quite a few parts to build up the Omega kit, and I'm really excited to put it together. Uh, we have all sorts of tubes, couplers, uh, booster tubes here, motor mount, all sorts of uh, laser cut plywood parts. We've got a full hardware package here. We've got uh, 3D printed nozzles. Here's the cam system. Also inside one of the body tubes I found a, a vinyl uh, set with uh, decals and what looks like a wrap that will go around the five and a half inch section. We have uh, some paper transition wraps over here. Here's the fins of course. Here's the instructions. And what I thought was interesting of note was uh, I pulled out several of these 4-inch couplers here. Two of them are smooth, one of them is fuzzy, and I thought that was odd. But the kit actually comes with a little explanation about the fuzzy couplers. 
These uh, couplers are used for stiffening the airframe, and uh, with the with the coupler peeled, that'll help the epoxy uh, ad adhere a little bit better. So let's uh, open up the instructions and get started on the kit. Like most kits, the Omega construction begins with the motor tube, but before I actually get to the construction here, I just want to show you the instructions here that comes with the kit. These are uh, heavy paper, they're glossy, they're uh, color, and uh, fully illustrated as you can see. Really nice. This will be uh, great for assembling the Omega. Also having a look at the hardware pack here, I noticed that the, uh, the different assemblies come all put together. For example, the eye bolt for the centering ring on the motor tube. You've got the, uh, the eye bolt plus the two nuts and the two washers all in one spot so you don't have to go digging around for everything. Additionally, something that I was really impressed with was uh, Scott's use of his uh, laser cutter to etch the parts to actually let you know uh, which part you're looking at. He's got all the parts labeled using his laser cutter. So it's really nice. It'll make, uh, it'll make parts location a whole lot easier, especially with so many parts like the Omega has. All right, so let's get these uh, set aside here and we'll start on the motor tube. Just like any other cardboard or fiberglass kit, with the motor tube it's important to use some sandpaper uh, to rough up the surface here so you can get plenty of uh, epoxy adhesion onto the tube. So I'll just go ahead and rough up the tube here with some sandpaper and we'll get to work. Alright, the instructions start by having you make a line for the uh, forward centering ring and the aft centering ring. And so I've uh, marked those locations and now you can take the uh, handy information sheet on about the fuzzy couplers, wrap this around the motor tube, make sure it's straight, tape it in place, and then you can use that to mark a straight line to line up your, uh, your centering rings. So there we go. I've got that set. I'll just move it right up to the, uh, to the line here. Okay, perfect. Now I'll just run my pencil along the uh, piece of paper here and this will give you a nice straight line. The forward centering ring isn't uh, super critical on, on how well aligned it is, but the uh, aft centering ring touches all the fins, so it's important that it's nice and square. Okay, there we go. I've got uh, both alignment marks on the uh, motor tube here. So I'm just going to line up the forward centering ring and the aft centering ring and glue them into position. What I'm going to do is just run some tape along each line here and that way I can just rest the uh, centering rings against that tape. I'm going to tack these centering rings in place with uh, CA glue and then I'm going to come back with epoxy and make fillets. Alright, so I have my centering rings in place right now. The instructions said that they would probably take some sanding to fit and sure enough they did. But I'd rather uh, do that than have them fit too loose from the beginning. I also have my tape in place, and in addition to attacking these things in place with CA, I'm going to use a little bit of wood glue on the inside of the joint as well to really strengthen the joint. Now you may or may not notice on the video, but uh, these centering rings are actually only an eighth of an inch thick uh, plywood. Most of the high power kits that I've worked with so far in this size range use quarter inch for everything. But uh, Scott likes to build light, and on a rocket like this, we're doing our best to keep weight out of the aft end of the rocket. So. 8th inch rings it is. Most of the uh, thrust from the motor gets transferred to the airframe uh, through the fins anyway. But we'll make sure that the centering rings have a nice strong glue joint here. So with my uh, beads of glue in place I'll just push these centering rings right up against the uh, tape. And give the glue a little bit of time to set here then I'll remove the tape. Then. Uh, and we'll spot it with uh, some drops of CA. Make sure that's nice and set properly. And then we'll add the fillets. Now the instructions talk about adding the, uh, um, the uh, eye bolt here to the top first before doing the centering rings, but I like to uh, install the centering rings without the weight of the eye bolt uh, causing any issues. And then I can come back and add the eye bolt later. All right, to tack the uh, centering rings in position here, I just use a few drops of super glue. We'll just go around the perimeter like this. And this will not provide enough strength for flight, but it's enough to hold the rings in position so we can remove the tape and add the epoxy fillets. A little bit of kicker to quicken up the, the drawing of the CA. 
and now I can remove the tape. All right, you know it's building season when you finally break out the rocket epoxy. This is my favorite epoxy uh, for use on high power rockets. And I just want to show you how I uh, like to mix up the rocket epoxy. Now, uh, Wildman says you can mix it either by volume or by weight. The nice thing is, either way, the ratio is one to one. I like to do it by weight because uh, the rocket epoxy is relatively thick compared with uh, Bob Smith epoxy. So it's tough to tell if you're getting the exact right amount as you're putting it into your mixing cup. Uh, but if you use a gram scale like the one that I have here, it's super easy. So this gram scale I got from Amazon for like 13 bucks. Uh, I use it for my black powder and for max and for uh, for measuring the uh, rock epoxy as well. So we don't want to count the weight of the cup itself. So we'll just turn on the scale there uh, with the cup in place. It shows 0, 0.0 grams. And now uh, what you have to do is just kind of guess how much your how much uh, epoxy you're going to use for each assembly. And for doing uh, two of these smaller fillets, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say probably no more than, than uh, 20 grams of epoxy. So what we want to do is uh, get uh, 10 grams of the resin here, and then 10 grams of the hardener. So I like to just start with the resin, like so. Look at that, 10.02, uh, that's almost perfect. And I'll just use the same popsicle stick to grab from the, the hardener as well. I'll just uh, clean it off best I can. Might not be as pure as possible, but it seems to work fine. All right. So here's a little bit of hardener. All right, so there's uh, 20 grams of epoxy. I'm going to get to work mixing this all up now. All right, because it's pretty cold in the garage, uh, what I did with the epoxy before mixing it is I set it in front of a heat lamp, and that really helps uh, the epoxy flow a little bit better, makes it easier to mix it up, and it'll help it cure a little bit quicker too. And uh, that uh, that procedure is, is uh, fully endorsed in the instructions by Wildman, so it's not like you're cheating, not an issue to, to heat up the epoxy kind of artificially before uh, mixing it up and, and uh, applying it. And speaking of applying it, we'll just get to work right here. I'm gonna put a nice bead of epoxy around on these centering rings here, and uh, we'll uh, set this assembly aside to let the epoxy cure. After applying the epoxy fillets, I wanted to clean them up a little bit, so I put on this latex glove and dabbed some denature alcohol on it. And I was able to just use my finger to make a nice smooth fillet all the way around here. So this part's uh, done. We're going to wait for the epoxy to cure. We'll set it aside and uh, see what else we can do on the build. Just because I had some uh, epoxy left over from doing the centering rings, I wanted to see what else I could do right now that didn't require much in the way of uh, fitting and whatnot before the epoxy starts to cure. I found all these parts here. These need to be laminated. Uh, these are the uh, rail button standoffs, and these are the mounts for the booster uh, tubes. So I'll just um, lightly sand them. I'll put some epoxy on them. We'll put them together, and that way we can use the last little bit of epoxy here. Okay, with the motor mount flipped upright, I have uh, added a, a wood glue fillet on the lower centering ring, and that's because the, the fins are going to butt up right against the centering ring. So I want to minimize the amount of uh, fin that I have to kind of sand away to make sure that it uh, sits up nicely against both the motor tube and the centering ring, so the, the wood glue makes a smaller fillet. Now I've mixed up some epoxy, and I'm going to put that on the top uh, centering ring here, and I'm also going to add the, um, the uh, eye bolt for the recovery harness attachment here. So I'm going to start just by uh, putting on my Rock epoxy, and then I'll mix up a little bit of JB weld for the eye bolt. All right, here's the upper part of the eye bolt assembly. I have the nut and the washer already on with some uh, JB weld to hold everything in place. And I found that the uh, the screw hole is actually uh, small enough that I have to thread the bolt through, which is not a big deal. I put some uh, JB weld on the threads there. So we'll just screw that all the way down. Make sure that the washer is clear of the outside. Uh, diameter of the centering ring. Just make sure that gets pushed inside, and we want to make sure that the uh, that the eye bolt is also clear of the outside diameter as well, so the thing actually fits inside the body tube. Now you don't want it to be uh, perfectly parallel. Uh, that'll make it difficult to fit the recovery harness once it's inside the uh, the body tube. So make sure it's at a little bit of an angle like that. So that's good the way it is. I'll add some uh, JB weld to the uh, washer and the nut for the lower part there. And we'll get this uh, we'll get this bolted up. With the motor mount assembly completed, we can set this aside and let the glue cure. 
Now, this wasn't uh, much for building on the uh, SBR Omega to start the build series with, but uh, there's a reason for that. I gotta set this aside, and I need to order some parts for the next video because we're gonna go a little bit off script going forward. Hope to see you then.